My name is Amar Jyot Singh. I'm talking to Vishal Ghai from Edmonton, uh, Alberta, and Vishal is in uh, Calgary, and Vishal is not a client, but Vishal has a lot of information about something that is uh, uh, people who are applying in uh, PR under marriage or spouse visa. Uh, hai, Vishal, uh, message Vishal, welcome to my show. Thank you, Majorji. But I can't tell you what the situation is. What message is there? Sorry, my Hindi is in great English for work. Yeah, yeah. where are you from? I, I'm actually from East Africa. Punjabi, oh, but from East Africa. Oh, you're from East Africa. Yeah, okay. Let's, let's, let's go for Let's go to English. Let's go. What is, the problem, what is the problem in the marriage application or PR application we are talking about? So basically, we formed a group um, and uh, we are we basically call ourselves Canada spousal sponsorship affected by COVID-19. Okay. Um, what we're trying to do is to lobby for a special visa, so STRV, to try and get our families to come and reunite with us. Which wait, um think, wait a second, wait uh, a second. You are you are lobbying to get a new visa called STRV from the Canadian correct. government. So that you you can be united with your spouse. So this is the first Correct. time I'm I'm hearing somebody trying to lobby for a new visa. So tell me a little background about yourself, like people like you who are collected together in this effort. You are trying to sponsor your wife uh, on a PR. So, absolutely. So we all about ninety nine percent of us have ongoing applications, and we have passed the sponsorship. Uh, stage of it okay. most of us have submitted uh, the biometrics most of us have submitted uh, the medicals yeah and uh, there's just been a freeze after that where we get no we get no feedback in terms of what's happening even after ordering a gsm and you know the the regular updates you get on the net yeah. there's just there's just a freeze and uh, Apparently, we just have to wait. So we are all Canadians or PR holders who have married foreign nationals yeah. and are now trying to get our spouses in. Okay. Um, my personal case, I am. If I look at the website, I'm eight, 16 weeks away from hitting the year mark. My application uh, went to Delhi. I got married in Kolkata. Yeah. And um, there's there's 625 members, all different nationalities, all different uh, visa offices that they're waiting on. But even looking at our uh, comments that come through and everything, we have we have particularly come up with the fact that Delhi, the London Processing Center, Cairo are amongst the worst when it comes to getting feedback or having an application go to. Yeah. We, yeah. we have done everything legally. We have all the legal paperwork. There is no. There's nothing come out like we need to do additional documentation. Most of us have used consultants or lawyers. Yeah. To do our applications and this the spousal sponsorship seems to go through really really fast yeah yeah and that happens within four months all the way up to the medicals sure so sure. what our what our problem is is we're saying students get to come in and student as i've seen from a lot of your postings too once they've worked for two months, once they have the right NOC, they are able to bring in their spouses on yeah. an open work permit. Yet yeah. we are stuck in this dilemma where we may not see our spouses for a year to two years. Yeah. Can I can we I can, can I interrupt yes. you quickly? So what I understand is that you are uh, anguished about the delay in your PR sponsorship application for your spouse because of COVID uh, travel restrictions. 
these applications have been dragged uh, beyond normal times, as I can see on the screen, if you can. Uh, yeah. so PR applications are still processing because this is not a normal circumstances and uh, they are prioritizing applications like Canadians trying to return to Canada, vulnerable people, people farm essential services. So just like other applications, just like uh, you know, PNP, Express Entry, student visa, work visas, uh, business visas, and you know, uh, people who are coming for non-essential uh, purposes. Those other applications are similarly impacted. But you think you what you want to raise awareness is that based on your PR sponsorship as a Canadian sponsor PR or citizen, you need quicker processing of your spouses so that they can come here faster. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yeah, so either a quicker sponsor or a quicker process or in this trying time, we're looking for a special visa that will reunite us, either an open work permit or a permit for our spouses to be able to come and join us. Yeah. And while the application is ongoing, we we are Canadians, we abide by the law. And if there is a refusal, we will address the issue then. Yeah. We are willing to take care of our spouses. We are not going to be a burden on the government. A lot of comments that come up that really upset us is we're told spouses have no economic gain to Canada, which I totally disagree with. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, so have you have you approached the uh, Minister of Immigration or who did you talk to so far? We have uh, talked to the Minister of, well, we have sent out uh, lobby letters. We send out letters every Tuesday. And we, in terms of members, we have talked to our local MPs to try and push the agenda. We have senators who have come on board. We have had uh, immigration uh, lawyers, you know, look into it. Some of them laugh at us and say, well, you're trying to get something that has never existed, but we are making all these special efforts and all these measures for COVID-19, why are families being left out? Let me, let me ask you, let me ask you some questions from the, from the immigration legislation point of view, even if, first of all, it is very unlikely that in this uh, extenuating circumstances of COVID and uh, you know, mm. uh, travel restrictions and contact tracing and, and those those factors that the the parliament or you know or, or they will pass a new law amending Immigration Refugee Protection Act to make a special category of visas for for this uh, group, which has yeah. close to hundred people or less than five hundred people. So it is very unlikely that will happen. Uh, I don't remember in my uh, recollection in the past 10 years or so that similar uh, situation has happened. If it has, you know, you must remind me, but I've never, I, I never heard something like this happen. So what I'm thinking is the, the, the best solution for you is to, is to plead for a visitor visa for your spouses while the application is been. That is the most logical and pragmatic approach to, to overcome this scenario. If you can uh, plead for a, a regular visitor visa uh, for Sorry. your spouse to actually come and visit here, you know, while while they are pending uh, the finalization, I think that is the that is the uh, easy thing to ask for. And you can Sorry. do this at the level of the at the level of the immigration minister itself. You don't have to go to any other lobby. Uh, the immigration minister especially, and maybe you can write a letter to Justin Trudeau. And also on the individual level, on an individual level as well, you can write letters to immigration program managers, which are the head of uh, the visa uh, immigration section in various uh, high commissions uh, embassies. So that is what I will, I would prefer that you do to get success. Um, what, what you are asking is that, you know, if a person is already pending for spouse applications, they are typically, typically not always, typically not given visitor visa because now they have to prove their uh, temporary intent, which is not the case because they already have PR application pending. 
So, uh, you know, the immigration program manager at that level, maybe they have to use the discretion whether this person will come back or uh, he will end up maybe staying in Canada to, uh, to, uh, till, the, till they get the uh, COPR. So, which is something that they have to decide on that level. But on the, on the other hand, if, if the coronavirus uh, is impacting all travel, even if they get a visitor visa, how will they actually travel to come here? They will not be able to travel nonetheless, whether they get the visa or not. Well, uh, things are opening up now, and uh, we expect that even if they, they do come up with this special, which we will try to call the STRV as a special uh, visa, um, if they do ap approve it, it will be a couple of months, and hopefully by then, Things are opening up. International flights are opening up. Canada says that uh, families can be reunited, but a lot of members from that post where they said, "Oh, borders are open and families can come across." About a hundred members from our, um, I didn't do it, but a hundred members applied for a TRV and were rejected under the Section 205, saying there's not enough family. There's not enough ties back to the country. But yeah. what we're saying is, we are Canadians, we're legally married to these people. We've put in all the proof. The spousal approval for sponsorship, I'm sure they do their due diligence before they send it off to a visa processing center. If I'm if I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong. And then the visa center is the one that determines whether this is a real marriage, if it is right, if that is the way we understand it. So our process, our, our trying, my understanding is in four months through a visa office in Canada, I get approved. My wife does her biometrics, does her medicals. It says criminality passed on my application, right? Why does it take Delhi office, for instance, eight months to one year to further determine this case? Well, well, you 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 will not have likely any impact on the processing procedural delays. Uh, some mm -hmm. some applications will take longer. Some take uh, less. Uh, it's an individual case by case, uh, you know, dynamics. Uh, so, okay. so you know, I think uh, th there's no need to to challenge why why they are taking longer than usual. It is obvious mm -hmm. why because they have reduced staff and reduced uh, uh, resources for doing all this. Uh, instead of challenging them, why cannot do it faster? You might be better off in focusing on uh, you know humanitarian and compassionate considerations. Uh, to for the immediate family member. So if, for example, your if just an example, if the spouse is in New Delhi, for example, and uh, New Delhi already has a lot of coronavirus uh, cases rising and okay. now now the beneficiary of that PR application herself may be in, in uh, danger, then that mm -hmm. might be a consideration. And this has happened in many examples. You know, I remember there was an earthquake or uh, there's some, uh, you know, like a natural disaster in some countries and in those Correct. situations and in those situations, the Canadian government helped people who were pending uh, in the immigration applications, just like yours. That might be that might be an angle to look at. Uh, I think you, you should focus in, instead of uh, asking for a STR visa uh, or something else. I think you should focus on the danger to the Canadian spouse uh, under that circumstance, especially given the fact that in some some countries the uh, you know the curve is rising, I think that mm -hmm. that way you may have a better uh, sympathy to your case than anything else. Absolutely. If you if you look at the points we have under the STR visa, we just named it STRV, but yeah. the points that we have is because Senator Mobin uh, tweeted it out that way, so we just picked it up from what she said and took it that way. But what we're saying is we want to be afforded the open work permits that students are being given, right? I'm but, 
taking the, the full... students the students are not getting the visa even even right now in the past four months or so i think that none of the Correct. students and none of the other temporary visitors are are coming here so so i i don't think anybody is coming uh in yeah, since, but since May prior to that all our applications are a year plus yeah yeah so if we look at it looking back at it that way right yeah. when a student can come in get get a job under a noc b or whatever it is and manage to get an open work permit for their spouse to bring them in why can't we be afforded the same well, why I, can't there, our there's no, there's no the I, 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 don't, I, I do not disagree that you should get this similar benefit if not more i don't disagree with it mm -hmm. but what i'm saying is we are comparing apples and orange students yeah. Students and workers and uh, temporary visitors, TRV holders, they are coming for a temporary intent visa. They are coming for, you know, for a particular time limited visa. Uh, mm -hmm. To start with, uh, the visa applications for people like your wife, they are coming for permanent immigration right from there. So there's a different level of scrutiny. There's a different level of documentation and other things and the, the quota and the issuance of visa. There's a different set of formalities. So uh we cannot compare those two categories but uh yes uh just like i i the gave example of the natural disaster in in those Correct. situations the canadian I just, government have, I just have lifted. mentioned and just to mention when you're talking about natural disasters my wife is in kolkata she's just been through two cyclones yeah right and if that <laughs> if that isn't a natural disaster i yes. mean these are things we mention but it's like they've turned a, bl a blind eye. Nobody is listening to us. We have MPs coming on board slowly and they're saying we will table it. We'll bring it up to the immigration uh, committee once the committee sits. But like. What we're trying to do is at least address the issue or accelerate the applications and sure. I appreciate your advice. You actually, I have picked up so many good points from what you told me, which in the future I would want to, you know, put into the lobby. And I, if you I don't like mind, to, I would, I would, like, I would to like to help you. I, I would I would like to I would like to plead your case with the Minister of Immigration. No problem. Uh, but hey, let me let me show you. Let me show you something on the screen. If you can see the screen. Do you see this? Uh, yeah. This is 2010. There was a there was an earthquake in Haiti in 2010. Correct. Can you can you see it? Correct. I think it's on the screen. So uh, in in that time, at that time, uh, because the earthquake was, you know, I think 7.0 uh, in Haiti. So what they did was they did something to the processing of applications already at the time. So they expedited those applications. Do you see that? It's everything that's listed here. And yeah. they help and they help people in certain category. So this is similar to something like this. This is what you need uh, to get going sure. for your case. So you can you can take this example. This is operational bulletin 179A. So you can code this if you want to, or you can check this over Google. So something something like this. I think this this will this will work for you. Uh, and okay. I'm I'm pretty, and, and pretty is certain. COVID is COVID not considered a natural calamity too? Well, like. Yeah, it is, it is not. But hey, look, there's a. Uh, um, it's something that you know you you require some medical opinion on this because if if they uh, you know if there's a great chance that she will get infected or you know she's already uh, not in that uh, position of getting adequate medical attention, you know that will boost up your your case. And this is, I think, I think for now this is the this is the angle that you should proceed for maximum impact on your lobby effort uh, but i'll be i'll be happy to put in my word hey, if uh, if i can help uh, so this is the uh, this is the object of our discussion because we want to Absolutely. want to spread this word uh, we want to spread this and and uh, help people comment and, and join in so wh why right. don't you perhaps you can uh, you can announce your website where people can go and then sign the petition on your website uh, just uh, announce the website now Absolutely. So the uh, our Twitter campaign is uh, hashtag family sponsorship matters. And uh, we have a Facebook page. Which is I just make sure I get it 
right? Okay. Canada spousal, sorry. Canada spousal applicants affected by COVID-19. That's a long one. So, Can Canada spousal applicants affected by COVID-19. That is a long we one. Have, uh, I, bet, I bet people can remember that. We have uh, 622 members currently. Is this a .ca or .com? What is this? Oh, that was a Facebook page. So if they go look that up on Facebook, they will be able to get us there. But Twitter is the best uh, best opportunity to link up. And we do have a uh, petition going. And uh, I... I'm trying to I'm trying to search this on your Facebook page. I cannot find it. So unless you can show me a link no. there or something, I can see it. I, I'm searching it. I cannot find it. So I'm I'm trying hard. Let's see. Okay, if I can. So if, uh, can I read the link out to you? Yeah, you can you can read the link out. Uh, I I'm just wondering if people right. can it's pretty, people can find it's it easy. Pretty to find long. It. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, HTTPS uh, backslash backslash M dot facebook dot com stroke groups stroke one eight seven one eight six one eight six five seven nine five three zero and it the title is Canada spousal sponsors sponsorship needs to improve and we currently have about three thousand members signed in our goal is to get at least fifteen thousand yeah. Because okay. we believe this is a prevailing dilemma that a lot of people are facing, but nobody has ever spoken out about it. Okay. And we appreciate your help. Well, I, I like to I like to help out. And uh, if you uh, want, please also uh, announce your phone number. If somebody wants to call you directly or email you, you can also announce that as well. Absolutely. So. My email address is uh, seafoodheaven at yahoo.com. My phone number is 403-966-1820. And basically, if you get in touch with me, I will put you in touch with the admin group because we like to do everything with pen and paper. So we have the proof and there is a lot of articles and there's a lot of videos being posted. I posted a Father's Day video. We have about five other members who posted yeah. a Father, Father's Day video. We have appeals from a variety of membership. And see, today we discussed my case, but uh, the thing is we're lobbying for a number of people with all different yeah. applications yeah. and different diversity in terms of where their applications are stuck. No problem. Thank and you very much. Was, Thank you very much for your message. I will I will post your uh, the F uh, the FP the link the Facebook link at the bottom of the screen and also your phone number so that people yeah. can uh, contact you directly. And we want to bring in as many people as possible, including uh, you know there are a lot of spouses, uh, student spouses who are waiting for their you know partners also as well. So uh, if, if perhaps something can happen, but. Uh, I think uh, there are two uh, factors uh, under play here. One is the coronavirus restriction, and second is, uh, you know, the resources at the Canadian High Commission level. Because I, I can, I can reckon that in the past four months or so, uh, the number of applications pending must have gone, you know, who knows, five times, ten times higher. So I'm sure. They must be wondering how to handle this this overload and you know mm -hmm. uh, as you said new delhi is always one of the busiest correct yeah yeah the, thank you very much thank you very much vishal i'll post this and I'll, uh, i you know let me know if something else i can do for you uh, hanji i'm um, just uh, wondering if you are able to forward me the video too so i can yes, put it yes, on I the will. yes i will i will absolutely